Thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Higgins, to inquire. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Barthel, the Congressional Budget Office estimates that the loan program relative to this issue will cost $32 billion over 10 years, which is considerably less than the $101 billion cost to taxpayers and retirees if the PBGC were to fail. Is that accurate? Uh, the, uh, the estimate that you uh, cited from the Congressional Budget Office is uh, accurate. I have not seen the, uh, the latest estimate on the failure of the PBGC's multi-employer plan. Okay. So this is 130 pension plans covering millions of workers, many of whom are represented here. Um, we've heard references to fiscal mismanagement, <clears throat> reforming of the systems, uh, workers deserve better, a Ponzi scheme. Uh, but it seems to me that these weren't of great concerns back in 2017 when this committee approved a $1.7 trillion corporate tax cut that was unpaid for. Um, where was the better fiscal management then? We also have a history on this committee and in this government to provide bailouts that were considerably more uh, than what is proposed today, which isn't a bailout, which is a good faith loan to good hardworking Americans who were adversely affected by either a breakdown of industry or a breakdown of the economy with a severe contraction. And I would remind everybody that in the insurance industry, there was a company called AIG. They got a $67.8 billion bailout. In the auto industry, there was General Motors and Chrysler. General Motors got a $50.7 billion bailout. Chrysler got a $10.7 billion bailout. And let's not forget about the great service that the financial industry provided us back in a economic freefall. Uh, Bank America received $45 billion bailout. Citigroup received a $45 billion bailout. J.P. Morgan Chase received a $25 billion bailout. And Wells Fargo received a $25 billion bailout. Mr. Barthel, how does that differ uh, from what we're trying to do here to help workers who were adversely affected by economic conditions uh, over which they really had no control. Uh, Mr. Higgins, I, I don't know that that's really a, a question uh, appropriate for me. It seems like general debate for, uh, for the members. Well, who's, who's paying for these bailouts? The American Tax taxpayer. Taxpayer, taxpayers uh, are ultimately responsible uh, uh, for uh, paying the interest and in principal on U.S. Uh, U.S. securities and uh, other forms of uh, financing that the members of Congress uh, choose to provide to uh, different sectors of the economy. Okay, was the corporate tax cut of uh, 2017 paid for? The. Uh, uh, public Law 115.97 uh, was, uh, yes on no. whole, a, a net revenue loser. Of $1.7 trillion, or at least in that range over 10 years? Uh, by the Joint Committee's estimates at the time, it was uh, slightly less than $1.5 trillion, sir. $1.5 trillion for, for tenure, over 10 tenure, years. For 10-year budget period. And the estimates the Congressional Budget Office provides relative to what we're speaking about today is about $32 billion, considerably less than that corporate tax cut. Mr. Bethel, my, my only point is this. It, it seems as though when good, hardworking people are stuck, all these obstacles to providing some help are advanced. But when Citibank runs into problems, when GM runs into problems, when AIG runs into problems, when we had the savings and loans problem with a huge government bailout, it's a different situation. I think we have an obligation to do what's right and pass this bill today on behalf of hardworking Americans who will spend this money, which will help drive economic growth moving forward. I yield back. 
Thank the gentleman. Let me recognize the gentleman from the. Uh, sure, please, please. <laughs> Please, uh, the faster we can move through this, the faster we can get this legislation completed today.